Let's jump in to some more Spanish and remember to repeat these words with me. Tu. Tu. Tu escribes. Tu escribes. Él. Él. Él controla. Él controla. Usted. Usted. Usted corre. Usted corre. Nosotros. Nosotros. Nosotros sabemos. Nosotros sabemos. La niña. La niña. La niña juega. La niña juega. I'm really excited to jump into lesson three where we get to talk about subject pronouns. Subject pronouns are a lot like butter. Why butter? Well, because they go hand in hand with verbs, which are like potatoes. And I don't know about you, but I've never had a dish of potatoes where butter has not been involved in some form of their preparation. So let's get into this lesson on subject pronouns. Here's the learning outline for lesson three. We'll first start with vocabulary. Next, we'll move on to the actual explanation of what subject pronouns are. We'll spend some time talking about subjects, and then we're gonna jump into an interesting and unique subject called usted, and we'll spend a little bit, quite a bit of time here, if I'm honest, followed by a quiz and a comprehension exercise. So here's the vocabulary. Please repeat these out loud with me. Comer. Comer, comer. Ella come, ella come. Tú comes, tú comes. Usted come, usted come. Usted, usted, ustedes. Ustedes. Regresar. 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 Escribiendo. Escribiendo. Estoy. Estoy. La semana que viene. La semana que viene. Here are some phrases. Tú quieres un taco. And I've highlighted the subjects in yellow. Tú quieres un taco. ¿Cómo está usted? ¿Cómo está usted? Ellas van a la playa. Ellas van a la playa. If I'm going too fast, or if you want to spend more time on this slide, please feel free to pause the lesson and work on any of these words that you need to. All right, just a quick reminder of our foundational formula. I've left the objects out because that's a lesson for another day, and I really want to focus on the subject-verb interaction. In lesson two, we talked a lot about verbs, and in this lesson, lesson three, it's all about subjects. So, what is a subject pronoun? So a subject is the person or thing performing the verb. So remember, the verb is that action word. Well, somebody or something has to perform that action. So if our verb is to sing, somebody's got to be singing. If our verb is to study, somebody's got to be studying. And here are three examples using subject pronouns, where the noun, which is in yellow, um, is performing the verb. So first example, the teacher is helping us. So the teacher is the noun performing the verb. The verb here is to help or helps. 
the teacher helps us. The women speak loudly. Our house creaks at night. Okay, everything in yellow is a subject because these are performing the verb. The teacher is helping, the women are speaking, and our house is creaking. Now, let's bring in this element of pronouns because uh, we're not just talking subjects, we're talking subject pronouns. The, a pronoun is simply a simplified version of the noun. Okay, so instead of saying the teacher helps us, you replace the teacher with a simplified version or he, for example. So he helps us. Instead of the women speak loudly, we replace the noun, the women, with a simplified version of the noun or they, they speak loudly. Finally, instead of saying our house creaks at night, we replace our house with a simplified version or it. It creaks at night. Okay, so that's what a subject pronoun is. It's a simplified version of the subject. A lot of students tell me that Spanish uses complex terminology that doesn't make sense. And the term subject pronoun is a perfect example of that. You hear that term and it causes a little bit of angst and anxiety, right? It's a, it's a complex term and it's hard to define. So for simplicity's sake, I am going to do my best to just use the term subject instead of subject pronoun because subject pronoun again is, is a complex and in my, in my opinion, it's an unnecessary term to learn the language. So we're just gonna call everything that fits this description, uh, description a subject. Here's the subject pronoun chart. You're very familiar with it in English. So let me skip past that and emphasize one thing. Each time you want to make a statement, a statement that includes a verb, so this would be like a clause or a sentence, you absolutely must pair that verb with a subject. Okay, so subject and verbs are absolutely linked at the hip. The important thing is that the subject you choose it must determine or it will determine how the verb is conjugated. So you can't just conjugate however you want. You've got to conjugate based off of the subject that you choose. So here is the Spanish subject chart in all its glory. Isn't it beautiful? Que hermoso, no? So you're somewhat familiar with these already. We're going to jump past them. And I wanted to let you know that there are also other subjects. So you're not just limited to what's in the, in the subject chart. So here are a few more vocabulary words that you'll find helpful that could also be considered subjects in your sentence. Los maestros. La niña. El buzón. La reunión. El conserje. Mi martillo. Tu bolso. Alemania. All right, so the point of this list is to tell you and co to communicate that really any noun, any person, place, or thing could be considered a subject and used as a subject in your communication. Even things like my hammer, your purse, uh, Germany, Alemania, <laughs> a country or a place like the post office, okay? These could all be considered subjects in your sentence. Let's go through the list of subjects in Spanish one more time, and then I'm going to introduce you to a really unique topic. Yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, vosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes. Notice that a couple of these words here have the term informal or formal written next to them. For example, tú is the informal version of you, and usted and ustedes are the formal version of you. So if you're looking at your Spanish subject chart, I want to draw your attention to these two terms here, usted and ustedes. This is where we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about what these two words are, why they're important, and how you can use them in Spanish. Essentially, usted and ustedes are the formal way to say you and you all in Spanish. Let's talk more about that in the next slides. 
So what is usted? Well, it originated centuries ago when the nobles and the wealthy people didn't want their servants speaking to them in the same way that their close friends would. So they came up with a more formal way for their servants to address them. It was basically a more formal way for them to say, you. This formal you was the equivalent of what you know or what we might know today as your majesty or your highness, which those two terms in Spanish translate into vuestra merced. And over time, that term vuestra merced has been shortened to usted. So what do they mean? Well, again, usted is the formal subject pronoun meaning you. And ustedes is the formal subject pronoun meaning you all. Sometimes during this course, I will differentiate ustedes from vosotros, because again, those both mean you. And I will translate vosotros to mean you guys and ustedes to mean you all. So if you see that, you'll know what I'm talking about. So practically speaking, this is what it would look like. Instead of saying, tu comes, which means you eat, if you wanted to speak to somebody in the formal you, you would say, usted come, you eat. They both mean you eat, but one of them is used in formal situations. Here are some examples using usted and ustedes. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Morgan. In Spanish, say this with me. Es un placer conocerle a usted, señorita Morgan. Es un placer conocerle a usted, señorita Morgan. Can you help me? ¿Me puede ayudar usted? ¿Me puede ayudar usted? You're all going to the concert. Todos ustedes van al concierto. Todos ustedes van al concierto. Okay, when do you use usted? How do you know when you're supposed to speak with an added degree of formality? Here are the situations. If you're speaking to teachers, teachers deserve an added degree of respect. If you are speaking to law enforcement, business owners or high level executives, prominent members of the community, managers or leaders at your place of work, senior citizens for sure um, deserve to be spoken to in usted and clients or customers that you are working with adults that you meet for the first time, these are all examples of where you would speak using usted. Now, of course, there are exceptions to every rule. So let's look at a few of the nuances related to when you should speak in the formal you. All right, so the use of usted and ustedes varies, of course, by region. There are some places in Central and South America where they don't even use the word vosotros. Okay, so this leads to this next one. Vosotros is mainly used in Spain. All right, so that means that in Central and South America, you're going to use ustedes both formally and informally. Children should use usted when speaking to adults, but it's not that common for a young child to speak to her own parent using that formal you, okay? Adults should use usted, that formal you, when speaking to colleagues and supervisors in formal settings. But as you get more and more comfortable with the people you work with, even your boss and your boss's boss, it's likely that over time you would stop using usted and start using a more informal way of speaking. So everybody should use usted when speaking to the elderly. Now, if you're speaking to your own grandparents, um, it, it's unlikely that you would use usted. But sometimes you will hear that. Within families, again, the formal usted is not typically used. Um, close friends, of course, are not gonna speak to each other when using, uh, or not going to speak to each other using usted. 
unless they are upset with each other. So it's almost a way that if you're close with somebody, you could speak in that way to kind of like um, drop a subtle hint that you're not very happy with them and you kind of separate yourself from them. And of course, as a society becomes more and more casual, the use of usted is less and less common. All right, so here's a quick question. Why is the location of these subjects within the subject chart in Spanish, why is their location important? We've talked about this a couple times and I just wanna reiterate. The reason why is because of these conjugation charts. The conjugation that you select is determined by the subject that you're speaking about. So if you're speaking about vosotros and the verb is AR, you must absolutely use the conjugation that is that cent is in the center right, the right hand column in the center, that AIS. Here is the comprehension exercise for this lesson. You'll wanna pause the slide and go through this passage on your left, reading it out loud and making an attempt to understand what's being said here. Then when you're ready, press play and I'll come back in and walk you through the English translation. Are you ready to walk through it with me? Great. So um, here's the English translation. And right away we can see that somebody is writing a letter or a note or an email to somebody else. So it starts by saying, Señor González, Mr. González, ¿Cómo le va usted? How is everything going for you? Yo estoy, I am, escribiendo means writing, una carta, I'm writing a letter, para notificarle, to notify you, que, que means that, que yo voy, I am going, yo voy means I am going, a regresar means to return, going to return, a mi empleo, a tiempo completo, here's a great vocabulary word, I'm going to return to my full-time job, um, empleo, a tiempo completo means full-time job. La semana que viene, the um, next week. Okay, la semana que viene, that's another great, great vocabulary word. Next week. Usted ha sido, you have been, un buen jefe, a great boss, durante este internado, during this internship. Y es claro, and it's clear, y es claro, it's clear, que todos, that all, ellos, los empleados, that to all of the employees, le respetan mucho. They respect you a lot. Gracias por todo. Thanks for everything, Juan. All right. So I hope you were able to draw some of those connections, understand how the language is constructed, and also pick up on some really great uh, vocabulary work. That's it for lesson three. Thank you so much for joining me and let's move on to lesson four.